Jerry Ann. Thanks for joining me today. Last week, we started talking about trusting God in challenging times. You know, we can say we trust God, but it's in those difficult times, those hard places in life. Can we still say, I trust you, God? Can we still lift up our hands, close our eyes and say, God, I trust you to get me through this, to help me through this? When I think of this, and I was praying about this series, I was thinking about a friend of mine. He worked here at Jerry Savelle Ministries, Tommy Roberts. Back in 2004, he worked here at the ministry and he has a daughter named Dominique, him and Lynette, his wife. They had a precious daughter named Dominique. She was 18 years old. She worked with me in children's ministry at the church. Such a blessing, such a special girl, just a light when she walked in a room. But February 29th, 2004, she drowned. And Tommy worked here at the ministry, and we walked through that with him. And it was such a tough, challenging time. It was such a, a hard place. But you know, I will never forget Walking down the hall, I remember we were in the mail room here at the ministry. Tommy was getting his mail and he was walking back to his office. And I remember watching him walk down the hall and I thought, wow, how does he get up every single day, come to work, still believe, still trust, still in church, still involved when he went through such a tragic thing, him and his wife went through such a tragic thing in their life. And I thought, wow, he has tapped into a place of trusting God, a grace that's come over him. And I just, I was amazed at his um, ability to continue to trust when he didn't have all the answers, when he didn't understand why this would happen to his precious 18-year-old daughter. But I watched him and Lynette walk through it. Today they are pastoring the church in Iowa, and I'm just so proud of them. But I talked to Tommy the other day on the phone and I said, take me back to that time. I mean, our family was there from the moment it happened. And I remember those dark days. I remember those hard times. I remember holding his wife, Lynette, in my arms and letting her cry. And I asked him, what, tell me, how did you get through that? And his words to, to me were, we tapped into a layer of grace that carried us through every single day. He said they had tapped into a layer of grace. He also said there were things I learned about God that I didn't know because he put his complete reliance and trust in God to get him through the darkest, most difficult time in his life. He said, of course we miss her but the pain and the sting of it is not as hard because we know where she's at. So here's an example of someone who has walked through such a challenging time in life, but can still say, I trust you, God. Still preaching, still serving, still standing, and says, I trust you, God. I ask you that today. Can you still say, despite all you've been through, can you say, I trust you, God? I know that whatever I go through, that I can still put my complete reliance in you, that you'll walk me through, that you'll help me through every part of this journey of life that we're on. With, with tears streaming down your face, can you still lift your hands and say, I trust you? That's where we all need to get to a place in our life when those things in life hit us. You know, bad things happen to good people and even to Christians. Bad things happen. But can we walk through it knowing that God still has a plan, He still has a purpose, and that He can carry us through the most difficult and challenging times of our life? You know, there's times in my life I've questioned God, why did this happen to me? What did I do for this to happen to me? But I'm telling you today, you got to forget the wise. You can't keep going over the wise. The wise will keep you stagnant in life. They will cause you to despair. They'll even cause depression on your life if you stay stuck in the wise. So I'm encouraging you today, if you're stuck there, to get up and just lift your hands and say, I don't understand God. I don't understand what happened but I know that I'm gonna put my trust in you, my complete trust in you. All that I am, 
I trust in you to help me get through this time in my life. God doesn't bring harm. He's not the one that brings destruction. He's not the one that did this bad thing that you're going through right now. You know, when my dad and mom went through back in early 70s, my, um, my sister's fingers were cut off in the nursery. They were in a service listening to Kenneth Copeland preach. And I think my sister was about 18 months old. And mom and dad were in the service. All of a sudden, a nursery attendant came in running with my sister Terry in her arms, blood gushing everywhere. And dad said, you know, at that moment, his faith was truly tested. Do I really believe this or not? And so he had the opportunity to put his faith in action. Do I trust my God that he'll get us through this? And he said at one point, he's in the bathroom and he's, he's wiping off the blood on my sister's fingers. And the nursery attendant knocks on the door and hands my dad my sister's fingers. He says these were on, she said these were on the floor. My dad said fear tried to grip him so strong, but he had to remind himself at that moment what God said in his word, that his promises were for my dad and for my mom, that their seed was blessed and that God could restore my sister and her fingers. And dad said at that moment in his faith walk, I mean, it marked him for the rest of his life. And if you've heard the story, my dad's told it a thousand times. My sister's fingers were restored, miraculously restored, that God restored those fingers. But dad said he had to, he had to know that God didn't do it. You know, God didn't bring harm to his baby. He said people around him were saying, well, maybe God did this to teach you something. No, we don't serve a God that cuts baby's fingers off. You don't serve a God that is allowing you to go through what you're going through. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He doesn't bring destruction and death and chaos and, and loss to our life. He's a good God. But whatever you're going through right now, He can walk you through it. He can get you to the other side of this. Jesus told us in John that there are tribulations, there's trials, there's frustrations that's going to come. But he says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I can walk you through this. If you will be in complete peace with me, complete trust in me, that I can walk you through anything and everything that you're going through. And that's what he's saying to you right now. Put your trust in me. I'll walk this through with you. Hey, watch this announcement. We'll be back in just a few moments. Now is the time to start trusting God and walking in His promise. In the powerful three CD teaching, God is Everything You Need Him to Be, Jerry Savelle uncovers truth that will help you develop faith and trust God to be your refuge, your provider, and your comforter. God promises that He will meet our every need, spiritual, physical, and material. In the inspiring book, How God Supplies Your Every Need, you will learn to operate in principles that will revolutionize your thinking and cause you to experience God's best for your life. Also included in this package is the revolutionary CD teaching from Jerry Ann Savelle, Trusting God in Challenging Times. Don't wait. It's time to take your faith and trust in God to the next level. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Trust in God package featuring God is Everything You Need Him to Be, How God Supplies Your Every Need, and trusting God in challenging times. Open your heart and ready yourself to walk in the freedom that comes from trusting God today. Hey, I want to encourage you to go to the website right now and order this product offer that we're offering for you. This is to encourage you, strengthen you, and just build you up in faith. So go do that right now. We were talking about your Trust in God, believing in Him, trusting in Him, even in the darkest times in your life. You know, your heart is where you carry your belief system. What do you really believe? Do you really believe that you can trust God even in the darkest times in your life? You have to settle that once and for all, that down in here, no matter what comes my way, I will trust God. Through the good times, and through the bad times. Listen to Proverbs 28, the Amplified. Verse 7 says, 
The Lord is my strength and my impenetrable shield. My heart trusts in, relies on, and confidently leans on him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices with my song will I praise him. It's when your heart trusts in him, relies on him, and confidently leans on him that you can have a song in your heart. You can still have joy on the inside, even in those dark times. That a grace can come over you, like my friend Tommy said, a grace can come over you to walk you through the darkest, hardest times in your life. The Passion Translation, Psalms 112, verse 7 says, They will not live in fear or dread of what may come, for their hearts are firm, ever secure in their faith. When you get to that place in your life that you are firm, that you're unshakable in your faith, that whatever life may bring, it's not going to get you off your faith. It's not going to get you to doubt God. Because ultimately, that's what the enemy is hoping, is that you'll begin to doubt God, get out of faith, get out of the plan and purpose for, for God's will in your life, and just forget this whole thing. That's what he's wanting you to do, is get off course and get mad at God and not trust him anymore. But you have to have a firm belief, like it says, that you don't fear or dread what comes. No matter what comes, I will trust God. That I will confidently, completely trust God. He's there for you on the mountaintop and he's there for you in the valley. Whatever place you're at right now in your life, he's there. He's just saying, come to me, let me help you. Be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. He's overcome all the tribulations, all the trials, all the frustrations that you'll go through. He's saying, just come to me. I want us to talk the next few minutes about a scripture that's really impacted my life. It's Psalms 37, 3. And it's four things that if we do these four things, then we can live a successful life. We can live a life of peace. We can live a life of completely trusting God in everything that we do. So I want to read it from the Amplified Version. It says, trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. Verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on him. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Verse 7 says, be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. Four things it's telling us to do. It's saying to trust in him delight in Him, commit in Him, and then just rest in Him. And I'm telling you, when you get to a place in your life where you can do those three things or four things on a daily basis, every single day when you wake up, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. Lord, I'm going to delight in you. Lord, I commit my ways to you. And then you rest in Him. You can live a life of peace. Perfect peace, Jesus says. You can live a life of perfect peace when you begin to apply those four things in your life. And I want to break those down right now. Number one, first of all, let's establish trust means a firm belief and the reliability, the truth, the ability, or the strength of someone. You have to get to that place that you completely trust God. You rely on Him. You rely on His truth and His ability. Think of the weight that it takes off of you when you're not trusting in yourself, but that you're completely putting your trust in Him. That burden that you remove off of you, you don't have to carry the load anymore when you completely trust in Him. You know, faith is not pretending that problems don't exist or this trial that you're in right now doesn't exist. A lot of people say that about word of faith, that we pretend like there's no problems. No, that's not it. Faith is trusting. Faith is just trusting in God and his ability 
and that he's a God that does not lie and that his word is faithful and that he's true. That's what trusting and faith, they go hand in hand. Faith and trust go hand in hand. Faith trust in a good God. Faith trust in a good God. We can take care of the stuff that we need to take care of, but then we don't take the care of it on. Do what you got to do, but don't take on the care of what you're going through right now. Jesus told us in John 14, 1, New Living, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. So he's saying, don't be troubled. Whatever you're going through right now, don't be troubled. Just trust in me. Why do we make this so difficult? Why do we try to take the care on? Why do we try to make things happen? When he's saying, just trust in me, I'll give you perfect peace. I'll give you the answers. I'll give you the wisdom. Just trust in me. The message translation of Proverbs 3 says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one that will keep you on track. It's so important that you're listening for his voice. You know, start out with the little things. I'm just listening for his voice. Just, I mean, it may sound silly, but I've got, I've got to have some dental work done. And I'm like, Lord, what do I need to do? He said, get a second opinion. See what someone else. I mean, I'm just trusting him in every part of my life. I'm listening to his voice in every part of my life. So listen from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for his voice in everything you do, and he'll direct you. He'll keep you on track for everything that you go through. The second thing is delight. It says delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight in yourself. When you do that, you find a peace that passes all understanding. When you get to a place where you're just so in love with Jesus, that you're spending time with him, it's like the psalmist said in Psalm 42, as the deer panteth for the water brook, so my soul pants for you. You know, when you begin to delight yourself in the Lord, you begin to want more of him. You want to spend time with him. There are times I just crave alone time with him, just to fellowship with him. This past weekend, all my kids were gone. It was just me and God. I had the best weekend, just me and him. I was delighting myself in the Lord. And when you do that, you want him more. You want to spend more time with him. Your soul will thirst for him. When you get to that place where you just can't get enough of him, then you're delighting yourself in the Lord. You want your life to be a reflection of that, that you've delighted yourself in the Lord, that you, you're full of Him. People delight in many things. They delight in, in relationships, in their careers, in their hobbies. But those are all just temporal things. It's when you delight yourself in the Lord and you make Him number one that you're going to have perfect peace in every area of your life. He will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. That's what he says. Delight in me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart. He knows everything you desire. He knows everything you have need of. But he's saying, delight in me, and I'll give you those things. It sounds a lot like Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. How easy is this? Put him first, put him first, and then he will take care of anything and everything that you have need of and that you desire in your life when you trust him and you delight in him. I heard this quote. It says, this world can never, never satisfy our deepest longings, but if we choose to delight in God's way, he will always provide above and beyond our expectations. It's when we put him first, when we delight in his way. The third thing is commit. It says, commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on him. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident also in him. 
and he will bring it to pass. Your commitment to God will be tested in the trials of life. You will really find out where you stand in your faith when you're, when you're hit with trials of life. Is your commitment to him really a commitment? Or are you just committed because it's easy right now and nothing's happening bad in your life? But when the trials of life come, can you still say, I'm committed to you, God? I'm committed to you. You show your commitment to him by the choices that you make every single day in your life. The choices that you make show your commitment to God. Psalms um, 48 in the Psalms Now version says, Stand tall in your faith, courageous in your commitment. Courageous in your commitment, no matter what comes your way. And that Proverbs 3, it says, or, or Psalms 37, it says, To roll and repose each care of your load on him. I had to look up that word repose, and it says a state of rest, sleep, or tranquility. It's just when you put your care over on him that you enter that place of rest. Uh, the Passion Translation of verse 5 says, Give God the right to direct your life, and as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. Give God the right to direct your life. Give him your day. 1 Peter 5, 7, I know lots of scripture, but the answers you need are found in the word. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your care on him. Cast all your care on him because he cares for you. And that fourth one is to rest. It's simply resting in the finished works of what Jesus has already done for you. It's resting. You know, I always say this, but as a mama of six, I love that word rest. I don't get a whole lot of rest. And when I get to rest, I love it. Like this past weekend, I didn't have to take care of anybody. I just took care of myself and that was pretty exciting. But God is saying, rest in me. Now that's not getting off your faith. That's not doing, you know, okay, well, God going to take care of it. I don't have to do anything. No, faith without works is dead. You have to use your faith. You have to stay on guard. You have to stay in faith. But while you're doing that, you're just resting. What are you resting in? The finished works of Jesus. You know that he's taken care of it, that he's got it under control. You know that there's victory coming in your direction. Just stay on the path. Trust in him. Delight in him. Commit to Him and rest in Him. Amen? You don't have to figure this out. When you rest, you're trusting. You're saying, I trust you, God. I trust you so much, God, that you have the perfect plan. You have the wisdom. You, you know what I need to do, and I rest in that. And then He'll give you the answers that you need to get through what you're going through. I found this quote, it says, when you truly enter into the realm of faith, you enter into the rest of God. When you enter into the realm of faith, then you've entered into the realm of resting. Matthew 11, Jesus said to us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He's saying, come to me right now. I'll give you the rest that you need. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's your mind, your will, and emotions. That's where we struggle with all those questions of why and trying to figure out life. He's saying, I will give you the rest that you need right now. For his yoke is easy and my, his burden is light. So I'm saying to you today, Come to him. Come to Jesus right now and let him be your everything. Stop trying to carry this load on your own. Whatever it is you're going through, he's saying, come to me. I'll give you the rest that you need. Watch this announcement break and we'll be back in just a few moments.
Now is the time to start trusting God and walking in His promise. In the powerful three CD teaching, God is Everything You Need Him to Be, Jerry Savelle uncovers truth that will help you develop faith and trust God to be your refuge, your provider, and your comforter. God promises that He will meet our every need, spiritual, physical, and material. In the inspiring book, How God Supplies Your Every Need, you will learn to operate in principles that will revolutionize your thinking and cause you to experience God's best for your life. Also included in this package is the revolutionary CD teaching from Jerry Ann Savelle, Trusting God in Challenging Times. Don't wait. It's time to take your faith and trust in God to the next level. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Trust in God package featuring God is Everything You Need Him to Be, How God Supplies Your Every Need, and trusting God in challenging times. Open your heart and ready yourself to walk in the freedom that comes from trusting God today. Go to the website now and order this product offer. I know it'll be a blessing to your life. So we were talking about Psalms 37, 3, where it says to trust in God, to delight in Him, to commit to Him, and then rest in Him. And I'm encouraging you today to get that scripture out for yourself. Begin to meditate on it. Apply it in your life. And every day when you wake up, you make a commitment to that. Lord, I'm going to trust in you today. I'm going to delight myself in you. That I'm going to commit my ways to you. Commit my thinking to you. Commit my speech to you. Commit all that I am. I'm going to commit it to you. And as you do those things, then you're going to rest in the finished works of Jesus. Resting and trusting, they go hand in hand. Faith, resting, trusting, they're all the same thing, is resting and trusting and faith in Him. Whatever you're going through today, God's saying to you, I want to help you. I want to walk through this with you. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. If you're weary right now, well, I speak over you in Jesus' name that whatever you're going through, that as you lift it to Him, you give it to Him, you cast all your care on Him, that you're going to have a supernatural peace come over your life today, that you're going to feel God's presence in your life, that you're not going to feel overwhelmed anymore. You're not going to feel stressed out because you're going to trust in a God that loves you. He cares about you. He wants to walk through this with you right now that you don't have to carry the load anymore, that he has a plan, that if you go to him, he's going to give you the wisdom right now to get through this very thing that you're going through. So I tell you again, trust in him today, delight in him today, commit to him today, and rest in him. He loves you, he has a plan for you, and he's just saying, come to me right now. Hey, I hope you'll join me again next week while we finish up talking about trusting God in challenging times. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.